way it's taught off, it's the 2nd of February. It's 2, 2, 22. 22, 22. Is that right? That's cool. Uh, it is uh, the 182nd episode of Risk On. Hey, you got to check out our social media. It would be helpful if you, like, press the like button and and followed it and, like, told us to tell you about it and all that other stuff. You know, you know what to do now. By now, aren't you watching Facebook? They're plummeting. That's because you aren't pushing the like button. Facebook's down 20% right now on weakness. <clears throat> Miss Forca or I'm sorry, Meta. Meta. Alphabet. Google. Bit now. People just change their name all the time. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, I just told you to check out our social media. Please do that. Please like and follow. And uh, obviously what I'm excited about is the Risk On Business Conference is coming up. We're rolling towards it. I have taken two companies public, me and my team, in 2021. Alzheimer Neuro, Alt Disruptive Technologies. We just uh, announced earlier that we're merging Gresham Worldwide, our defense business, with Gigatronics. We do deals here. Some people don't do deals. I have a person joining me who does lots of deals because people all over the world use his product. And then there's people that just do real estate and claim they know how to do everything. But we do deals, man. We get deals done here. We raise capital. We buy companies. We bought a lot of companies, man. A lot of companies the last couple of years. Let's roll the clip on the conference. For me, Risk On is a philosophy. I'm a 30-year-plus Wall Street veteran, been doing this a long time, but I kind of live risk on the whole time, and I'm trying to bring you guys what I do on a regular basis. You guys are very worried about... Begin with the economic consequences. 86%. Less about wages and more about... Publish something like this. I knew I was worth more than... Frustrated as we did the classic risk-off day. I've been through this before. I've been at this for 32, 33 years. You know, I've ran a hedge fund for many years, and I really want to talk about things that I think we do that are risk on. Got to focus on growth sectors, aviation. You close the sale by moving it from. I can't area. stress to you how smart these people are. I am a salesperson, and I am making a living selling products and services. Eight figures a year currently, almost nine. If you guys don't know how to count, that's a hundred million plus. Mm. If you're a nine figure company, you're making one hundred million dollars annually. Who's in the house? Bradley's in the house. Well, wow. yeah. I like that. Hey, you know, if you join up for the conference and you attend the conference, you go to the conference, May 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th. You get closer school with Brad Lee for one year because Brad Lee's a closer. What's up, Brad? What's cracking? So if you guys don't know who Brad Lee is, I don't know what the hell you're watching this show for because you guys are on another planet. Brad Lee is, is the next Brad Lee. I used to say he was the next Grant Cardone, but actually I'm not worried about that. He's Brad Lee. Brad Lee owns Lightspeed. He's the CEO of Lightspeed. Lightspeed's been around, I think, how many years? 20 years? 21 now. Lightspeed is a company that allows your company to have online training tools. It's, it audits those training tools. Why don't you tell people about what you do, Bradley? Well, Todd, thank you. Mm -hmm. I am a serial entrepreneur. I've got a portfolio of companies, Lightspeed being the main one uh, that I've worked the longest on. It's an it's a interactive training and communication technology that companies use. I don't know where my camera is. The companies use to train right there, buddy. individuals, uh, whether whether it's uh, selling content, so subject matter experts like Grant, Tony Robbins, people like that, John Maxwell, uh, they use my technology to uh, deliver their training to companies and individuals, and then uh, companies use it to train employees. I'm I'm part of a I'm not a, I am a member of this MLM, but I don't sell their product. I use it because I really like it but I just became a member, but I know they use your, your stuff to, tr to train people too. So companies all over the world, they use your, your technology, they put up their modules, their training tools, and then they have their staff train on them and they can audit them, right? That's right, real-time tracking, notifications, communication features, communities, leaderboards, it's, you're, it's you're a like training system. You're like an education engine. Yes, a technology or a platform to deliver, track, and measure, and create interactive content. And then you you train people through trainer, a closer school. Can you talk about that program? Well, closer school, you know, I started out 
obviously mastering sales. So Closer School is my version of a training system. So I mainly created it uh, to show other subject matter experts how it works, the light speed system. And then it just kind of got big and blew up, so I just kept it going. But Closer School is where you learn to sell, close, and persuade and how to become a better human being. Brad will be speaking at the conference, and if you come to the conference, you're going to get a year of Closer School included. Now, Brad ain't giving that to me for free. Ain't you hear that? That's my uh, that's my hillbilly uh, 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 education. He's not giving it to me for free, and I'm so compelled with it that I said, Brad, give me a deal on Closer School so that I can give it to everyone that attends the Risk on Business Conference. Because at this conference, we're going to teach you how to do things. You don't have to buy something else to know how to do it. You're going to learn how to do things at the conference. You're going to be able to ask questions. Brad will be speaking there. Brad, you speak all over the place, don't you? Yes. I see you everywhere. I mean, literally. So I see you in Malibu speaking at conferences, in San Diego speaking at conferences. What's the draw for you? You, How many places are you speaking a year? You know, 50, maybe. 15? 50, 50, 5, five zero. 0. Right. 50, because I can't, I can't say yes to all of them, but, you know, I say yes to about 50 of them. Do you have, like, a favorite conference you go to? I saw you speak at Grant Cardone's conference. I saw you speak at a bunch of different ones. What's your favorite? You know, the biggest ones are my favorite. I like walking out with, you know, 10,000 people in the crowd. It, for some reason... Uh, lowers my anxiety. If I have 30 people in the crowd, I'm more anxious and nervous than I am with 10,000. Be better for you to uh, to have a, a, a larger crowd. Yeah, I like larger crowds. Yeah, I would agree. So do you, I heard uh, an audience member tell me that they thought Bradley was today's Zig Ziglar. Do you think you're Zig Ziglar today? You know, I, that's a compliment if you ask me. Zig's a good guy. Uh, or was a good guy. I, he was a client. His family still is a client. So we have all of his content on Lightspeed. But, you know, he's one of the few people that, you know, walk the talk. He was a good guy. I like Zig. So that's a compliment for me. Yeah, Zig, Zig is a client. I saw him on you, like your board or whatever. Yeah. I have, a, I have a testimonial from him saying, train people like I do using Lightspeed virtual training. Really? Yeah. I would be playing that all day long. Yeah, it's pretty good. Why is that not on every day? Well, you know, you got to just keep some secret secret. Oh, I love that idea for sure. Jason, what's up with you? Watching uh, Facebook crash real time, looking fun, looking like a dip by, by the dip, as they say. It's down 22% real time. Uh, earnings missed. Uh, looks like um, revenue missed. Let's take a peek at it real quick here. Live uh, closing bell three hundred twenty three. Todd uh, after hours two hundred fifty, down seventy three dollars. Wow! I saw uh, I saw Spotify getting smoked. Spotify They're getting did crushed. Get smoked. They missed earnings fourth quarter weakness guidance, and Rogan outcry continues. A lot of people are starting to get behind Rogan now on his side. Um, what's that actor from uh, is it Kevin James? Yeah, Kevin James came out. He was uh, you know basically saying, hey, leave free speech alone. You, you deal with any of that? Well, no, but I would be on Rogan's side 1,000%. Yeah. Like, guys, anybody that's doing the censoring nine times out of ten is the problem. Like, leave, let, let people hear information and let them decide. That's just my opinion. Anyone doing the censoring nine times out of ten is the problem. Yeah, because what's so, what, you know, they're saying it's misinformation. According to whom? Well, according, according to whom? And why, are they, why is their opinion so damn important? Yeah, doctor. Like, like, dude, yeah, I, I yeah. can introduce you to doctors that, yeah. that that go with the conspiracy theorists straight up, and then doctors don't. So, what do you, what do you, who do you believe? Well, guess what? How about let both sides state their case and let individuals make their own decisions? It's not misinformation; it's information. It's not like it's not uh, world-renowned uh, experts in the field. Doctor Peter McCullough, uh, a world-renowned like cardiologist, Doctor Malone hold several patents to the mRNA vaccine. That's right. These guys are monsters. They just don't want to hear it because it doesn't fit their narrative. Well, I got news for them. Free speech is still alive. You're seeing Spotify have to deal with these people. Cancel culture, which you yeah. spoke of. This stuff is like nonstop. It's relentless. Like you said, if people don't agree or disagree with what they're talking about, they can just turn the channel. Let's get 
some information out of the way that I know is factual about you. And I want to be clear, you cannot dispute what I'm about to say to you. If you do, we'll know you're a liar. Okay. Okay, so uh, the people I know... <laughs> People I know, you consider you one of the best-looking guys in America. <laughs> so have you ever been, like, voted the sexiest man alive? Never. Okay. I've met your wife. Clearly, she's as beautiful as they come. And your kids are all beautiful. So what's going on with you? I, is it, like, the apple seeds from Oregon? Like, what did you do to have your <laughs> DNA look so good that you date the hot girl, you marry the hot girl, all your kids are hot, you're still hot? I think you're older than me. Are you not older than me? I don't know. Yeah, we won't talk about age, but I think you're older than me. Wait, how many cards are in a playing card deck? Yeah, oh, oh, oh. oh. I'm older than Ooh. that. He's older yeah. than that. Yeah, he's older than me. Where's the got him? The guy? guy's old. Got him. Exactly. Just seeing, right? Is it working? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, money. <laughs> All right, then. Got a little carried away there. <laughs> Not only that, but Bradley has a book. Yes, I do. And uh, if you want to get it the hard way, <laughs> we're not monetizing here. Just, just FYI. What? It, uh, no. Let me read it. Lessons I've learned the hard way, so you don't have to by Brad Lee. Got it. That's right. Got it. Are there they, any pictures? They were going to the name book? me Brock, but then I would have been Broccoli. That wouldn't have been good. Broccoli. Fuck! Are you kidding me? Hey, it's me? good for you, man. Are you, are you kidding me? It's high no. in vitamins. Holy shit! You yep. know, you just, that, I, I, I like you, so I can't say that, but that would be the greatest nickname. Brock Lee. Brock Lee. Dude, this book is basically crazy because you're going to learn this stuff anyway. The question is, is how long is it going to take and how much is it going to cost? So because part of my mission in life is to get the knowledge from the people who have it to the people who need it, mm -hmm. I figured I have to write down the lessons I learned the hard way so you don't have to. Because, again, you're going to learn these things. You may have already learned some of them. But this will make somebody's life about a thousand times better. Hey, you got to go to toddalt.com and sign up for the conference. Bradley's going to be there. We're going to give out closer school if you sign up. That's crazy. That make that's the price. That's, that's worth the price of admission, yeah, right, right there. Right. What's the book cost? Twenty five bucks. Ooh. Ooh. Can you kind of feel maybe we're going to give out books too? I don't know. Willie probably say, "Stop giving out stuff. Stop giving us stuff away." But I like Bradley. I'm a big fan. Brad, can you stick around for a few minutes? Sure. Okay, so what do we got next? What's up next? All right, yeah. we're going to go with a market update real quick. And we got It's Good to Be the King in the House, Mel Brooks's nephew, Mel Brooks's <laughs> best friend, the next Mel Brooks, Kramer, is on the line. Hey, did you roll the market update? Okay. Oh, we're Can we hear him? him? King, you want to say guys? hello? There we go. King say, King, say hello to Bradley and tell him how good looking he is. You're so good looking. <laughs> Thank it's you. A giant, it's isn't a giant it, love it, fest. Isn't that the Elaine line? You're it, so good looking. <laughs> exactly. Hey, what's up with Central, man? I have you on because I'm saying to myself, this thing keeps trading down every day. Uh, and I think that you're the biggest, uh, what's the word? Expert, uh, you're an expert. Bag in holder. Yeah. What's no, the story? Well, no. What's the story? I mean, I'm actually for the first time in a while optimistic. We're on an uptrend. Today was you know minor reversal. Knock on wood. Um, <clears throat> but we're trading at ten and a half cents pre-split. Yeah. We had a good. You know, <laughs> I mean, I'm averaging down like like a madman. But uh, we just we just need some news. We need an order. We need. Uh, Something. Did anybody buy that 249 dip on Facebook? Who's in the chat here? Well, Jason, let's cover the markets real quick. Dow's up 224.09, S&P up 42.84, NASDAQ up 71, Russell down 22.1. VIX is coming down off that 28.20 high low. Uh, uh, market rally for the fourth day. Alpha, alphabet, 20 for one reverse or forward split. Yep. 20 for one. What's the uh, effective date on that? Do we know? Is I it... don't know the date. Some jackass keeps buying Nile. Guys, I keep trying to tell you, read the disclosure. The reason I'm buying Nile is that on the 31st of December, I signed a purchase thing called a 10B5, 1018 plan that automatically bought it. It's in the control of the broker. I don't have any control of the buying of Nile till the blackout period, which is April 15th. I'm in a blackout period. I can't buy it, but the broker buys it. That's why you see these random purchases. I have no control over it because I put a plan in place to do it. That's the hedge fund buying it. And then on top of that, 
There is a buyback program that was announced for fifty million back in November, whenever it was. I don't control that either, so you can text me all you want. I can't answer it. I hope that gives you an answer. So my answer is like an indirect answer that I answered. What's up with Bitcoin, by the way? Bitcoin under a little bit of pressure here, 36,758. 36, Do you get the impression, if I could control it, that the market will just give me Nile? I mean, I'm just wondering, are they just going to give me the stock? It looks that way. I mean, a lot I have, of... We have bought seven, approximately, approximately seven million shares back it, for, at the hedge fund level. The company has a, buy, a buyback plan. I can't comment on that. Right. I, I, we have told you that what we expect to earn, we still are profitable Bitcoin way, way down lower. Um, new see. low, by the way, 24-hour low on Bitcoin is yeah. now 36823 Brad, do you have any Bitcoin? Yes. Nice. Do you like Bitcoin? Yes. See, isn't it simple to interview Brad? Everything's easier with Brad. When you come into Brad's office, by the way, Brad is one of the reasons, not the only reason, but one of the many reasons why I came to Vegas. I'll, I'm going to tell you guys a story. You may have heard it before. King, I promise we'll be back to you. I want to tell you a reason. Okay, So I came to a conference. I knew Grant Cardone before he blocked me. Uh, I came to a conference, and I saw Brad and Carrie, And I admired Brad for a long time. And I came and did an interview with Brad. And I loved his office so much. I said, I really want to move here. First of all, I knew there was an IPO coming. I can't stand. I love the place I lived in California, and I love California. I love California, but I can't stand the way it was going. It was very difficult to get anywhere. Everything was 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there, an hour there. When I left from Orange County to go to Beverly Hills to have a meeting with someone, it would be four or five hours out of my day to have dinner and fly a drive up. Was, you, know, you know what I'm talking about, Christy, right? Nightmare. Holy God, is it a nightmare. And I come to Brad's office. The guy's got taste. Not only is he good looking, but the guy has taste. I walk into his office. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I mean, it's a fucking palace. It's like there's rhinos everywhere, diamond-crusted shit. Uh, the floors are beautiful. The water tastes better with Bradley. And I'm like, I'm moving here. Not, not, no joke. <laughs> no joke. No joke. I come back to my office, tell them I'm relocating the headquarters to uh, Nevada. I gave everyone four months' notice, like, yeah, sure you are. I go, no, I'm telling them I'm I moving. I remember that. You remember that? And no one believed me. I found out over email because you weren't even home, and I was reading your emails, and you sent that out to everyone, and I was like, what? And then you came home. I'm like, is there something we like need to talk about? <laughs> and, and this is why you need to come to this fucking conference. You need to come to the conference, I'm telling you, because I manifest shit, man. I'm telling you. I didn't tell Brad I was coming. I called him up on the phone in, in, in November and said, I want to come and rent an office in your building. He goes, oh, come on, boy. Come on, brother. Come on over. And I just said, I'll take whatever you got. I want to be whatever Brad's selling. I want to be part of And I moved the company headquarters here. I gave the, I, one month notice. Brad said, move in here. I said, what do I got to sign? I signed a lease with Brad. Moved here. And it's been the best decision I ever made, except for marrying my wife and a couple of things. But I... One of the best business decisions I ever made. If you're not doing business with Bradley, you're stupid. You, I'm, I'm not kidding. Uh, if you have a business where you're training people and you're not doing business with Lightspeed, you got a problem. I love Brad. Is, is, that a, is this like a big enough commercial for Brad? Yes. Am I not excited that Brad's going to speak at the conference? And you know what the difference is? Is that when you come to the conference, you're going to be able to meet Brad. You'll be able to shake his hand. You'll be able to come see him. He'll be able to sign up for closure school, go to his programs. He doesn't gouge you, but you get something out of it. This is why we love Brad. What else do we want to talk about with the market? I remember that. December of 20, we were at Anthony's Steakhouse at, yep. the, at the M. I think it was New Year's. By the way, the right? day I was agreed to move over. Yes. And he comes, we were just having, we were having dinner there. No, that was before New Year's. Oh, that yeah, was like it was. before New Year's. It was. And Brad's already there with people. That's right. And you were saying, hey, you still got the spot for me. And you're like, yeah, come And by on. the way, you should know that I just randomly trusted him. Yep. I had nothing signed. I just said, I'm coming. He said, I believe you. And I said to him, Brad, I'm so convinced I'm going to be here. And I know you don't know me well enough. I'm going to wire you six months worth of rent. I remember that. Remember that? Yep. And Brad's like, all right. Yep, I remember that. Yeah. Do you remember on. that, too? Don't threaten me with a good time. Shout out to Anthony's, by the way. Gabriel and Frank. Oh, yeah. Great Gabe, place. Gabe's the, the best end. guy there. Gabe's and you know what you got me drinking? Which, by the way, this will tell you his taste. I can't help it. But I'm a Silver Oak guy. Like, I love Silver Oak. Mm -hmm. A glass of Silver Oak. But the first time I ever had Camus Select was with you. 
Holy I think shit. I was there, too. Oh, yeah. my That's God. That's the good stuff. There, yeah. Damn, is that the good stuff. Never yeah. fails. Smooth as silk. Hey, King, what do you want to cover Hills, today, buddy? Hillside Select? Uh, Camus Select. Camus Special oh, Select. It's very good. Camus uh, Special Select. The old Screaming standby. Eagle all the way. King, what do you want if to cover today? King, you were nice enough to come on with us. What do you want to cover today? What, what's on your mind, my man? Well, I, I did something stupid that paid off. I uh, took another stab at any. Oh. Got it about a buck eighty two days ago. It closed at two thirty three. Cheapies. Zila, another craziness, which is up like thirty five percent and just retraced a little bit. And I'm scooping more. And uh, beside that, I'm just dumping, you know, eight public school teacher salaries into Centro. Speaking of Centro, why don't we touch on that a little bit? I got the NakedShortReport.com browser up here. Looks like the last few days there hasn't been a whole lot of volume there shorting. Uh, the allocation on iBorrowDesk, which is the allocation for interactive brokers specifically at that brokerage, shows uh, 10 million shares available at a 4.4% borrow fee. That's not right. Uh, no, I don't no. think it's right at all. Dude, I, I don't... I, they returned them all, but I, I think they're, they're adding in... When people are returning shares and there were the old Q-SIPs, I, yeah. I, I think they were counting pre-reverse and post-reverse split numbers. Yeah, I don't, it doesn't make any sense. You're right about I think I think you're right about that. I don't think that's been reconciled. Anyway. Um, anyway. Haha. Ha. Any, hey, hey uh, I want to say something to you because we're going to wrap it up pretty quickly here. I got a lot going on. We got a lot going on today. And I we only Tons. Brad Lee's time is limited. Yeah. But uh, I don't want him to leave until I get a comment from him on this one. So... I believe the pendulum swings all the way, sometimes too far one way, sometimes too far another way. And b before you go to my screen and bring this up, I woke up to this today and I thought to myself, this may be the death of a little bit of liberal media. Oh, you're going to go there. I'm going there. Okay, and King, hang tight, buddy. Hang tight with me. Don't leave. I'm not commenting on anything. Okay, so... I'm not suggesting I, – I don't have actually a problem with it. I'm a big Bill Maher fan, although you'd argue they're attacking him now. He's like, hey, you're giving me so much stuff. Let's put a sensor in the car and spend a bunch of money to make sure there's no babies left behind, realizing that the people that leave the babies behind, either on purpose or on crack – aren't going to pay attention to the sensor. You know this whole thing, right, that there's going to be a billion dollars worth of sensors put in these new cars or half a billion or a billion – Whatever it is. Uh, Jeff, Z Jeff Zucker, who I met, by the way, one time. Yeah, I was going to – the Zucker punch. I just, wanna, I just want to – I just want to – I just want to – I just want to say, do, do I – do I or anybody anywhere have to comment about how the Dems eat their own? Yeah, it's pretty rough right now. Dude, it's you, – if you – your own party is just, like, killing you. Like, it's like it's – like, I don't know that any. I, this may not be reported. I'm almost speechless. That <laughs> and who's the guy who uh, attacked Trump when he when he was in office and he got like barred from the press releases and press conferences and then he came back. He's on he's on CNN and he he got barred and he came back because he won a oh, court case. The, what the guy that grabbed the lady's hand or yeah, like hit that, her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. That's, uh... He's like said he's stunned that he's out. I mean, <laughs> oh my god, dude. I, 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 do we do I even need to say anything? Chris Cuomo turned him in. He's the rat. Cuomo gets fired because of the, you know, whatever happened with him and his brother, you know, with Andrew. And then all of a sudden, oh, Jeff Zucker's relationship with uh, Allison. A Cuomo aide. Yeah, a Cuomo aide is revealed. Uh, it looks like uh, Cuomo's fighting for $18 million in severance. Allison Golust is actually the person that Zucker was having the alleged affair with. <laughs> if you're John Malone. Wow. If you're John Malone and you know... That this shit is merging with—I mean, you got to say to yourself, "This is, CNN, CNN is a train wreck. It's like a—it's like a train wreck. I can't even believe it." Uh, come on, King. What can you say? Wait, her, wait, her name is actually Go Lust. Go Lust. Uh, no, all I want to know is, and it's not alleged. It's not alleged. It's—it's it's admitted. Yeah, I want to know. True. By the way, hold on a second. You are fake news. You are fake. Run. I want to know from you, King, how your favorite news network is holding up for you, dude. <laughs> dude, come on. I, I will follow CNN. Jim yes. Acosta. Jim Acosta. I'm just I, kidding around. I will just follow Brian Williams wherever he ends up. 
Uh, Brian Williams. I like Brian Williams. Wait, he had he, some dirt just on him the news. too, right? No, he, yeah, he left MSNBC no, but it's, when he, his time I like the way out. he reports the news. Hey, Rachel Maddow left too? What's going on no over way. there? No way, is that true? She's gone. I, I, I haven't watched her since. She's gone. The, uh, she's not gone. She's not gone. She's what? on high, taking a hiatus. But she, I haven't she's watched gone. her since You mean like Whoopi Goldberg? Big tax release. What about that's, Whoopi? That's, that's Whoopi's different. Gone. Whoopi's gone. Let's just whip everyone's Dude, ass. Whoopi's gone. <laughs> like, what is going on Come on, on Whoopi. Here? Whoopi. Hey, hey. Whoopi, Whoopi's not gone, but uh, Whoopi's not uh, gone. Suspended. She's just on. She's just Spotify's on down fifteen percent in after hours. She got suspended. Okay, Skyla. Speaking of CNN, let's talk about the joke of the day. Ha. Huh. Uh, so, how is coronavirus like Groundhog Day? How? If you stick your head outside and encounter another human being, you get six more weeks of quarantine. Ooh. Oh. Oh. All right. Scary. There you go. Uh, I don't have any comment on the market. I think the market sucks. What? Do yeah, I'm down. <laughs> what are you down? Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> hey, we bought a bankroll challenge. We sold uh, BBIG at what 480? I think do you remember? So. I think it was. We were all in 480. Yeah. Took profit. Rolled the thousand dollars. Took profit on BBIG to twelve hundred eighty dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Went no. all in with the twelve eighty okay. on ticker symbol POW P O W W yeah. with an entry price at two, uh, three dollars and four dollars sixty six cents. Yeah. Yeah, 466. 466, all in. Bankroll challenge, all in on POWW right now. Okay, yeah. guys, I'm going to answer a couple questions, now, and we're going to call it a day because Brad's got to go. Uh, N-I-L-P. I'm not allowed to talk about it. I've been telling people that you can do preferreds. We file the shelf for $350 million. There are ways of issuing preferreds that are non-dilutive, that they have a coupon with them, that they're not convertible. There's all kinds of preferreds you can do. I suggest you read the shelf and understand why would I do a bridge loan that I have to pay in 90 days if I didn't think I could pay it back somehow. I've already said that, so this isn't me giving anyone information that I've already said. We are using the full arsenal of the capabilities of financing the future of the company at Nile. NILEP -L -E would imply that it's a preferred. I know that many of you saw that it was going to be listed because it was on Webull. I can't comment other than to say read the prospectus, but I appreciate that you guys are paying attention. Um, yeah, I'm grateful you're paying attention. I, I saw a couple questions for uh, uh, Brad. Uh, I already talked about one of them. Um, Camus, Camus is only $120 a bottle. Not Camus Special Select. <laughs> well, it's not I'll much more. Select. It's like a buck, buck 60, buck 80, if you can find it right now. Mm-hmm. Why does it have to be expensive to be good? Uh, people are asking about Yayo. Uh, I stopped doing that when I was 18. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I did it, it twice when I was 18 years old. That was, I'm 52. Like, why you keep it? So, oh, you mean the stock, Yayo. Oh, you mean the stock. That's right, the stock. Yeah, we bought, uh, I think, uh, 5 million shares of that stock. They are trying to uplist to the NASDAQ. I'm not an officer director. I filed a 13G. I'm not attempting to influence management. We bought 5 million shares. I think we paid $5 million, right? No. Wait a second here. No, we bought 10 million shares. I apologize. Uh, they, have, they have a tumultuous past, but they have really come up with a great model where they lease cars to people who are in the gig community. They do it for Lyft and Uber. They have a pretty big fleet they're developing could be very profitable. I'm very excited about the investment. I'm not a manager. I'm not on the officer. I'm not a director. I'm not recommending Yayo. It's changing its name to EV Mo, by the way. But I did buy some, and you guys all see it. At Dave Demergian, longtime friend of mine, who is a critic of mine. I've seen him blast me on social media a bunch of times. Looks like Dave bought some shares. Uh, I love MGM. But most of all, Today I'm going to do a podcast with Charlie Lee. I hope that's still going to happen. Mm -hmm. we got a bunch of podcasts coming up, the Risk On Conference. One of my favorite people are going to be there. We're going to leave out with this. Bradley, can we roll this clip just one more time? I like the clip. Let's roll Bradley's clip. We're going to come back to Bradley, say goodbye, and then we're out of here. Just because I am a salesperson and I am making a living selling products and services. Eight figures a year currently, almost nine. If you guys don't know how to count, that's a hundred million plus. Mm. If you're a nine figure company, you're making one hundred million dollars annually. I think I'm just jealous of how good looking he is. And I think he's like, how many kids do you have right now? Seven. Seven kids. 
This guy just tells me people walk by and they get pregnant. This guy, you are super everything, aren't you? Anyways, <laughs> hey, guys, I'll see you Friday. Mr. Bradley's in the house. Thank you to Jason, uh, our, 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 our friend over here, Skyla, my executive assistant, Nick and Brett. I don't remember. Is it, what's his name? Eduardo. Eduardo, thank you too much. Ah, man, uh, thank you this. so much. Christy, who's in the house, our new producer, thank you so much. Special thanks to everyone that was on that phone call at 1230. It was a great call. I appreciate that. Uh, everybody, risk on. See you tomorrow. I'll see you Friday.